today. I am testing the limits of the Wuxin Ocean KG935G radio. The 935G is the GMRS version of the Wuxin KG UV8H ham radio. They're exactly the same, only the programming inside is different. So it's like I'm getting two tests for the price of one. Now let me say up front that the KG935G is my favorite radio. It costs around $150. I love this radio. And it's because I love it so much that I'm going to beat the living shit out of it. It's the only way that I know how to express my emotion. Now, abusing the living daylights out of radios is nothing new. A long time ago, I watched a video of someone doing some very, very abusive things to a Baofeng UV5R, and I have to tell you, it really, really kind of turned me on. And I figured that if that cheap Chinese submissive slave of a radio, the UV5R, could handle that kind of abuse, surely my Wuxin can. So to find out how tough the Wuxin Ocean radios are, I'm going to submit it to all manner of abuse. Starting easy at first and slowly working my way up to some serious Chris Brown level ass beating. Now I know you're only here to see the violence, so allow me to get started with the abuse. You're stupid. You're ugly. Nobody will ever love you. I hate you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I love you. See what you made me do? I hate you. You're stupid. I hate you. Okay, some mild abuse. Let's see if it still works. Channel still turns on and she's not even upset. Now the abuse will get a little worse. Next, I'm going to hold it by the antenna. Now many experts online will tell us that if we hold it by the antenna, swing it around, or do this, it will surely immediately cause permanent damage and the radio or the antenna part of the radio at least will no longer work and that such abuse should never be done to a radio. All right, I've abused it a bit more doing things that the experts say should never be done already. There's signs of permanent scarring. Still turns on. She does not sound upset. And uh, I will now call my friend Chris. Chris, who is the real hero of my channel, 10 miles away, that direction. Hey, Chris, do you copy one, two, one, two? How do I sound? So as you can see, the antenna did not break, the radio did not break, it still transmits fine, the connector didn't break, and the antenna didn't come loose. And if it did come loose, I would simply screw it back on tight again. So far, so good. Now, we're gonna knock it up a notch. I'm gonna transmit on this radio without an antenna. All of the experts say that doing this will permanently and immediately damage the radio no ifs, ands, or buts. Look online. On any online forum, Facebook, YouTube comments, you will see hundreds and hundreds of comments talking about if you transmit without an antenna, it will damage the radio. So let's see what happens. I'm on channel uh, GMRS Simplex channel 19. It is on high power, as you can see. And I will now transmit by pressing the transmit button. You can clearly see there is no antenna connected. The antenna has been eviscerated from the radio. I don't really know what eviscerated means. So I will commence by pressing the transmit button with no antenna. If you're squeamish, you may want to look away. Radio is transmitting, as you can clearly see by the red power transmit indicator. Now all you experts would say that I should be using a clamp to hold this down while I transmit. That would be a good idea, but I don't have a clamp. 30 seconds. The radio has not yet exploded. It has not bursted into flames. As far as I can see, it still works. 45 seconds. The timeout timer just shut off the transmission. 
at one minute. And as we can see, the radio still works. She does not seem upset. Ah, uh, but the experts may say, oh, I'll bet the transmit power isn't working. Uh, it's damaged. I'm going to shut those experts up. I have attached my Wuxin Ocean KG935 to my Shurecom power meter. And we will see how badly damaged the final output circuitry is of the radio. We should see the power level output up here when I press the transmit button to see how much damage has occurred. 4.53 watts, exactly like it was before. No damage so far. Next, I wanted to put it in some water to check its waterproofness, but I also wanted to fully humiliate it, so... Now this radio is not fully waterproof. It is only IP66 rated. That means it can withstand splashing and spray. It is not a submersible radio. You're not supposed to put it underwater. And I left it in the water for about 15 minutes. I then froze the radio. I didn't realize until after I put it in the freezer that it was dripping toilet water all over my ice cream and fish sticks. I'll just make my wife clean it out. And even after the freezing, it still seems to work. It is still cold to the touch. It is still frozen. Still turns on. The screen is a little frozen over, a little frosted over. But to check it out and to make sure it's all working, I'm going to call my friend Chris again. Let's all take a moment to leave a comment and thank Chris for all of his hard work and dedication, without whom I would not be able to make these videos. Hey, Chris, do you copy? One, two, one, two. Roger that, Randy. I copy you loud and clear, sir. The next thing I wanted to do was simulate a common occurrence, dropping the radio from about waist height. I then wanted to simulate another common occurrence, running your radio over with a car. Not once, but twice. And as you can see, she barely has any bruising. We'll just say it fell down some stairs. It still works just fine, but just to test, I'm going to call Chris 10 miles away again, because if I don't, all the experts will claim that sure it can turn on, but it doesn't transmit. Well, it receives. Now, if you haven't already, please take a moment. To leave a comment thanking Chris for all of his hard work and dedication. Let him know how much you love him. Hey, Chris530, do you copy? Yes, sir. This is 530. I copy you loud and clear, sir. Copy that. And how does the radio sound? It sounds very good. Modulation's perfect. Zero static, sir. But I have grown weary of all the back talk. One, nine, two, zero. So now I'm going to try to shut her up for good. Now for this last bit of abuse, I have taken the battery out because I'm not testing the battery, I'm testing the radio, and I really do not want to deal with a lithium ion battery fire in my backyard.
And there she is. Those scars will last forever. So the big question now is, are all the experts right? Is this nothing but a piece of cheap Chinese junk that falls apart easily? Let's find out. I didn't burn the battery because I didn't want to have to explain to the fire department why I had lithium ion explosions in the backyard. So we will put the battery in. Actually went in pretty easily. You can see the keypad is pretty well melted. Speaker grill and microphone grill are not looking so great. And the screen has taken some damage. Will it turn on? She turned on. And I can still read the screen. I can sort of read the screen. I can mostly read the screen. So I guess the experts weren't right. It isn't just pure junk that falls apart easily. I have beaten the tar out of this thing and it still turns on, but does it still transmit? Still receives. Chris is eagerly awaiting 10 miles away that way. Let's see if it works. Chris, 530, do you copy? I copy, do you hear me? One, two, three, four, test one, two. Still works after all that. Now it does sound, I can tell there's something going on with the speaker, but I could still understand Chris just fine. He said I sounded okay at his end. After all of that abuse, I say all the experts are wrong. It's not a cheap Chinese piece of junk that falls apart easily. It does not fall apart easily. If you have any questions about what went on here today or about my abusive habits, you know how this works. <laughs>